my background uh, is uh, I have an undergrad in microbiology and then I, I, I switched mainly to uh, molecular evolution and bioinformatics uh, where I looked at plants and plant genes during my PhD and then uh, um, I started on biodiversity and molecular biodiversity during my postdoc at University of Guelph and uh, I continue on that and uh, like uh, my main area of research uh, has been uh, on, on using uh, uh, DNA sequence information to look at uh, evolutionary patterns of or biodiversity uh, on different groups of organisms and um, and recently I've been mainly focused on uh, using next generation technologies, next generation sequencing technologies to uh, uh, to look at uh, communities of organisms in different ecosystems. Well Environmental assessment, the way it's done now, um, it's very information poor. So uh, environment, we know, it's a very complex system and, and uh, uh, the most complex system, uh, uh, biological system, uh, uh, I believe. And, and in this sense, uh, um, the opportunity from genomic side and bioinformatics side is to uh, make this an information rich uh, endeavor. And, and in that sense, uh, once you have a lot of information and you can capture that information and process it, then you can have a much better assessment tools uh, in, different, uh, in different sectors and environments definitely will benefit uh, hugely from this. Definitely, uh, when you change your method, uh, methodology or, uh, or, or, or approach or quantitative approach, there are always challenges. And uh, in my opinion, there are challenges from the beginning as you go about designing your experiments and sampling all the way to, uh, to doing your wet lab work and uh, capturing the information from the, uh, uh, the pool of DNA or RNA that you have to the bioinformatics side of it. Um, and to me, the biggest challenge is to bring um, um, all different uh, like angles of the project in terms of expertise and 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 uh, and then uh, amalgamate them together so that they can handle different challenges within this process like for example in the sampling you need to be conscious about logistics you need to be conscious about uh, you know uh, the amount of work that it requires to go somewhere remote um, and and so your methods need to be tweaked uh, to to address that angle and, and then when it comes to doing the sequencing, you need to be aware of cost and biases and all those things. And at the end, the quantitative approaches and bioinformatics, which you really need in order to make sense of the information. So, That is probably the most important and, and difficult challenge for the DNA or genomics uh, uh, tools and technologies and approaches uh, to get in the hands of users and, and get in the real world applications. And um, I really think that uh, we are at a very, uh, I mean, like critical juncture with all these new technologies now. They're becoming more mainstream, which is really good. But on the other hand, uh, in order to ad address the challenge of regulatory side and policy side, I really think that we should work with those agencies from the beginning of the projects. Don't wait all the way till we have a product or we have a method and then go and try to uh, lobby with these guys because those guys who are developing these policies, they have other requirements that we may not be aware of. And, and, and in this way, we're gonna basically build a tool customized for the needs of the agency and then the regulatory side of it is gonna be handled a lot faster in this sense.